Hi guys, it's Ian from E2A. It is Wednesday the uh, 2nd of Feb 2022. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. A very warm welcome back. I've taken a long trade or a buy trade in the US dollar against the Japanese yen. In this video, I'm going to explain why. Uh, I've also got some potential setups in the CAD crosses. Now we've seen a move to the downside in the Canadian dollar. This was after OPEC plus increased by 400,000 barrels a day. Uh, and the lower uh, prices that we've seen in oil have also driven CAD lower. But I think that's going to be temporary. I've got some nice setups to uh, potentially buy uh, the uh, Canadian dollar. So let's get to the charts first. I want to go to uh, the US dollar against the Japanese yen. It's really this chart here. This is the hourly chart. Um, I'm not a mad Elliott Wave enthusiast. I prefer cipher patterns, but when it shows itself, uh, I will highlight it. So here, I've got five waves uh, to the downside. One, two, impulse uh, wave three, corrective wave four, and then down in five. Got bespoke support at 114.14. We made a 114.15 and a half lower low. And then we made this very nice candle. So this candle here is a bullish engulfing candle. And I like to see uh, these candles at the top or bottom of a trend. Uh, so obviously this is a bullish engulfing. So I want to see that at the bottom of a trend. What Elliott Wave um, dictates is that after five waves lower, uh, we should get three waves higher so something like that and probably uh, this formation to the upside will actually uh, give me the cipher pattern uh, to potentially go short on this um, dollar yen trade once uh, we've had the correction to the upside so i do know it's a correction um, and i was quite lucky i did take a buy trade uh, early on and i actually got out I then waited for my single currency yen um, to hit resistance and I've ended up getting in at uh, a pullback at 114.32. So uh, not in at the bottom of the trend by any means, but in around here, which is around about the Marabuzo level as well of that uh, large candle. I've got a stop place at 114.10. And like I said, depending on price action and what formation is um is, is built i'll be looking around about 115.40 and 115.50 uh, for a target level so uh, with regards to risk reward which should always be important let's just take the 40 handle i've got a 10 stop so around about five to one uh, with regards to uh, risk reward so let's have a look at the japanese yen so these are my single currency baskets similar to uh, my uh, cross currency baskets are still an analyze them the same way. Uh, the dotted lines are bespoke support and resistance levels. So you can see here, this was bespoke resistance. Now that hit at three o'clock. So even though dolly yen gave us a, a bullish outside candle before uh, this uh, completion, when it hit, that's when the dolly yen was moving lower and that gave an opportunity uh, to actually get a better entry in that US dollar against Japanese yen long trade, uh, hence being in um, at 114.32. Um, Canadian dollar, let's have a look at CAD. So we have been uh, moving lower uh, since that announcement. But I've got two support levels down here. I quite like it when I get two support levels close together because it gives me Sort of two windows of opportunity uh, to um, to buy this product. So, and I can always um, look at uh, the cross currencies, and if it hits this level, and I'm not quite at uh, the levels that I'm expecting on the cross currencies, then of course uh, I've got the option to wait until it hits this level. Uh, so the single currency charts are really working well for me at the moment. Let's have a look at the crosses. So here. I've just got CAD and you can see that I've tagged um, four different crosses. Now, the reason uh, why they're all amber is because I haven't put my foot on the pedal yet. I'm not um, I'm not in on these trades, but they are forming quite nice patterns. Let's go back to uh, showing all the different time frames because, it, you know, I'm not necessarily getting a one hour um, pattern. It might be a four hour pattern. It might be a six hour pattern, etc. And note that I haven't ticked any of these. So these crosses uh, 
I've got no interest in, but basically there's no there's no pattern building in those crosses, so uh, I'm, I'm leaving them well alone. Okay, the sterling against the Canadian dollar. Got a lovely cipher pattern here. Um, this is between uh, 172.70 and 172.74. So I will be looking for reversal formations just because it hits that level, uh, just because uh, the Canadian dollar might be at support. I need a reversal. I want to see one of those bearish outside bars. I want to see an evening doji star. I want to I want to have a candle where I know that if I place my stop above it, it's 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 the right place to be. Uh, so just because I have that that level, it doesn't mean I'm automatically trading at that level. Uh, so 170 to 70, 172 to 74, uh, the potential for sterling CAD completion of a bat formation, uh, CAD yen, um, and basically this one is looking. Actually, looking at this time frame here, so I've got two uh, potential um, turnouts, if you like, or analysis. This could push lower as, straight of, as yen increases, but you've got to remember yen is actually decreasing at the moment. So, what's driving this lower at the moment? Sorry to jump back onto the chart. You can see it is being driven lower, but what's driving that lower is not yen um, weakness. It's um, it's it's Canadian weakness. Canadian weakness is pushing that lower. Sorry, not yen strength. So it's nice to know the correlation. Okay, what's driving that currency pair? What's driving oil? What's driving the dollar? You know, we're not uh, just because euro dollar goes up doesn't mean the euro is strengthening. It just means that the dollar is is weakening against the euro. Um, so going to the one hour chart. Again, this might give us quite a nice setup here just for a correction to the upside and that wouldn't spoil that pattern by the way in the eight hour chart it actually um, give it some benefit so if we can get down to this sort of level 89.72 then it's a really nice bc leg bc legs at 88.6 percent of the ab leg so if we put a retracement tool on there okay 88.6 and i've got my bespoke support at 89.71 so building that the reasoning uh, to get long there and like I said this I believe is getting pushed lower my, my dollar yen is still holding up so this is getting uh, pushed lower by uh, Canadian weakness that we're seeing in the cross currency which we can see now okay uh, last no not last but least uh, New Zealand against the Canadian dollar here we've got a one hour back formation so again if we get to 84.53, 84.57, uh, when the Canadian dollar hits support, then we'll be looking for reversal formations there. And then Aussie dollar, not as nice, okay? It's quite wide. Um, I don't like wide patterns. And, and, and what happens a lot of the time, you get a false signal here, and then it will go up and it will take this signal and then come to the downside. So I probably only look to taking an Aussie CAD short um, if uh, we got a nice reversal can candle around about 1998, which is the 161.8% uh, extension, not the 127.2. All right, guys, I hope that all that makes sense. So I'm carrying a, a dollar yen trade at the moment. I'm looking at Stu Sterling CAD, CAD yen, New Zealand CAD, Aussie CAD. I won't take them all um, because I won't get signals in them all. Um, and I'll probably uh, look at what the other single uh, crosses or single currency baskets are doing at the time all right guys good luck speak to you soon bye